I'm putting on water-based polyurethane. And it is the normal brush on type. I have it cut a lot with a product called Floatrol, which is actually a thinner for spraying water-based products. And it just seems to help it flow out nice and thin and levels itself very nicely. So instead of gobbing on thick coats, I'm going the thin coat method. I always like several thin coats of things better than thick coats. But you can feel when it you get a little bit of a layer on there that really the pad, your cloth, rag, whatever, really glides over the surface nicely. And this is a gloss. I don't know if it'll stay gloss or if I'm going to knock it back a bit. It's the wife's coffee table and she likes shiny things. Like most people do. I like shiny things too, except mine are more shiny metal objects and high gloss paint jobs on cars. Wood, uh, I kind of prefer a natural look or a little bit more natural look myself. But we're going to do several coats of this and See if we can give it a nice, a nice shiny surface. Now one thing I have to say about high gloss is that a high gloss surface cleans up a heck of a lot easier than a matte or low gloss finish. So there's something to be said about that. And I think that's it for today. Uh, actually, I'll probably be able to put on a couple more coats today, but that's it for this session. We'll let that dry up and have a break. Sound that every man fears. So we're getting down to what I hope is the last of the finishing on this. And I've got a, quite a few coats with sanding in between. And I'm just going to take some scotch bright and just give everything a clean up. And hopefully this is my last coat. Let's give everything a nice light scuff. And naturally, after every scuffing with anything, we get rid of all the dust off of it with a tack rag. Don't want that in our finish at this point. And give it all a good wipe down. Get rid of any dust or nibs or anything that's going to interfere with the finish. I've built this up in fairly thin coats. I hope to get a nice even shine on it.
Okay, we're gonna carry on. All right, final step. Calling the base done. Let me just find close to the middle. And give it a small hole. Seven sixty fourths. And I bought some of these plastic plasticky uh, glide things. And, uh, oh my geez, that's a straight screwdriver I need for that. And I do have one right handy here. I don't know where I got these from. And with a three quarter inch number eight screw, below the surface of the plastic and I'm calling that done so while we were doing our base and getting that all fixed up for a few days our pseudo French polish has been curing and uh, I didn't do a complete job obviously still not a perfect for a proper French polish you should have built up a lot more layers and did a lot more leveling in that but I think we're level enough so now that we got it like this we got to ruin it I'm gonna just spray it with some water here and start giving it some tooth for polyurethane Give it a nice, get the shine off it, and give it something for the polyurethane to grip to. And when we're done, we should have a nice matte finish right now. And then we'll get the gloss back with the polyurethane. But this should give us a, almost a perfectly flat surface for a nice look with the gloss finish. We don't have to do a whole lot of sanding, we're just giving it some tooth. dry it off and look across it we shouldn't see any gloss should be a nice even flat sheen and you can still see some spots back here so we'll just Spots up here. So just kind of get your head down and use the raking light to to check for the gloss. I just want to take the gloss off. I don't want to take a lot of the finish off. I 
Time to start with the wipe on poly. Thin coats, several of them. Get the edges done nicely here first. And then we use some sanding it to go between coats. Although it shouldn't be too bad for grain raising with the shellac on there. So there's no drips or runs. Now I'll be able to set my beer on it. Don't have to worry about the ruining the finish. But it's all good. We keep adding until we're happy. Well, not until we're happy, until the wife's happy. I don't know if I mentioned that this was a birthday present for her. Right now it's October. Her birthday was last January when I promised her a coffee table. It's getting there, honey. Yeah, we'll give that a while to dry. And then we'll come along and give it some more. Well, almost down to the end of what I was doing. And I don't like it. I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but there's a spot right there you can see it looked like it sanded through a little bit totally different color I don't know if the wood was a little bit higher there or if the shellac was a little bit thinner I got spots like that there you can see right here right in here very splotchy it turned out my test piece that I did before that turned out great but I'm not happy with this not at all so there's only one thing left to do okay I said failure was an option. I didn't lie. Well, well, a couple hours later, we've re erased uh, about a week's worth of work. Back to starting. Oh, here we go with the boil. Blow again. Boiled linseed oil. I don't know what went wrong, but probably being a little bit too persnickety in my procedure. I'm trying to get everything just done a certain way and just didn't work out. No big deal. How else do you learn unless you experiment? Good thing I'm not getting paid by the hour.
Welcome back. I'm starting outside and it's for a reason. It's kind of a gray October day. I just wanted you to make note of the overcast and gray day. I wanted to show you as an example of something. Get into the shop, oh, and you can see that things are piling up in here. We had the winter tires put on, so we got those to clean up. A project that I'm not videoing that I'm doing with my son. But what I wanted to show you was this is, let me open up this door. I've got windows on the doors on the west side and that's the north side and that's the east side and there it is under natural light natural overcast day sunlight and it's looking pretty nice actually you can get the raking light across it I don't know how well this is going to show up with automatic white balances and such such on the camera but you see how that looks under natural light. Now my lights, I have three four foot fluorescents in there. Just up top. Haven't finished insulating yet. But the color temperature on these lights are 6500, which is supposed to be close to natural daylight. But the higher the temperature, the cooler the color. So they are very blue. Now, like very, very bright, bright sunlight. Let me see if I can do this both at the same time here. I'll hold this over here and I'll turn the lights on. Now, I don't know if the color balance changed on the camera there, but you can see quite the difference in that. So, I've got uh, three coats on here of. Uh, boiled linseed oil and I put two on yesterday with, you know not very heavy just dampened it let me get you on the tripod here just damp coats and after my second coat I come out about uh, an hour or so later and I saw little wee spots where the uh, let me turn the lights off again. Little wee spots where the uh, shellac had stayed. Had little wee micro thin spots of it, and you could really see it. And I was wondering, well, geez, I gotta, I've got to uh, sand that out somehow. But I didn't want to get any color variations. So what I did, my final dry sanding on this was uh, 220 grit. So I took 220 grit wet dry sandpaper. And I used the linseed oil, actually, as a lubricant. And that worked out really nice. So it's basically been wet sanded with blood linseed oil and 220 grit. And uh, really made a nice difference. Made a nice effect on it. So... Uh, after I wet sanded it with the boiled linseed oil, I took a bunch of paper towel and wiped off the excess and all the slurry and slush and what have you and then applied another good coat onto it. And this is what we got so far today. Which is a pretty nice looking finish so far. I can still see some lines in it. But I thought that was a good idea. So I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Okay, got my gloves on. My boiled linseed oil. And it's getting almost done. I'm getting right down to the bottom of the barrel here. We'll get some on there. A 
probably a little bit much for paper towel. So a nice coat of boiled linseed oil. Spread it around. A nice light coat on it. Make sure it's it's fairly even. So today what I'm doing is I'm going to wet sand it, except I'm going to move it up to 400 grit and see what that does for me. I'm still a little dry in spots, so you got a little bit here and there. And this seems to be a method that seems to be working out okay so far. Kind of spread it around with the sandpaper first. Applying boiled linseed oil with sandpaper. And like I said, this is 400 grit. Keep the cloth handy. I've already got lots of drips on my table so already. I'm just going to need a good cleaning after this. I've got the shop lights turned off, as you notice, because I can really use that raking light from the door and from the windows to help me see. Yeah, I'm starting to feel it start saying now. And it really suctions itself. And I'll take my paper towel. Just take off any of the excess. So anything that I've sanded up, any dust and dirt particles or what have you. And just take off the excess here. See that it's pretty soaked, so just remember when you dispose of these paper towels or rags or whatever, lie them out flat on a piece of concrete or a, on a clothesline or something. Boiled linseed oil will combust, it gains heat as it dries. We don't want to start any fires. I don't know, do you like me talking through these videos or is it better if I just shut my pie hole and do the work? You can leave a comment. I know I have funny inflections in the way I talk and leave pauses in weird spots. I'm not the best public speaker. So you tell me, do you like me explaining what I'm doing, or would you rather just show it? I'm going to just take that little bit of extra linseed oil and we'll spread it around.
And it looks beautiful in the natural, just the window light. My high temperature ceiling lights really makes things look different, even though it's supposed to be more of a natural sunlight. Now, that being said, I've worked in body shops before and you never know what a paint job comes out like until you get it out in the bright sunshine. So basically, my lights are making everything look as bad as possible. Which I guess is kind of what you want, because if it looks good under the harsh lighting, in the other lighting it should look great. Perhaps what I'm doing is overkill. Maybe I'm being too OCD about this. But it's a project for the wife. And I want her to be happy because she makes me happy. So can't give her the best of everything, but I can give her the best that I can do. Okay. Oh gosh, I'm making a mess of my table saw here. So without lights and with lights. And without lights. So we'll get you over here and get you that raking light from the the west. It's uh, about 10.30 in the morning, and that's the light coming in from the west. So, yeah, I'm liking that. Personally, coat of wax on that, and that would be fine by me. See, there's that natural. And if I come over here, you can see it here too. So there's some natural variations in it. But yeah, I'm liking it. Get the tripod out of the way. And give you another flyby with the, you know, the shop lights on. Oh, we'll let that dry and see what happens. Start laying on the polyurethane, I guess.